Thank you, Mrs. Gibbs, for that. I'm so thankful for God's love, which is always there for us. And we love Him, the Bible says, because He first loved us. That's what John says. If you have your Bibles open to Hebrews chapter 11 today, Hebrews chapter 11. I know I say this about every Sunday, but I tell you what, I'm glad to be back in church. All right, I love being here among my friends to open up God's Word today. And we're back in Hebrews talking about faith this morning. Talking about faith. We opened this up last week, this particular concept out of this passage. And with the Lord's help, want to continue uh, in that today. The fact is, we all exercise faith. Every person in here exercises faith in some way, shape, or form. I've got a doctor's visit tomorrow. Nothing major, nothing, just going to the doctor, all right? How many have ever been to the doctor before? How many have believed what the doctor said? How many have a medical degree in here? So for the vast majority of us, what the doctor says we accept by, help me, faith. How many ever thought that the, the doctor was a quack? Anybody said, I don't like what the doctor said, I'm going to get a, another opinion? And so rather than call another trained professional, we call the best professional in the world, and that's Google. <laughs> Come on now. How many have skipped the doctor and just gone straight to Google? I have this rash. I don't, but I'm just saying you have a rash, all right? And you, you, you type in the rash inside the Google search, and the next thing you know, you find this story. Yes, yeah, some guy in, in uh, some strange country, third world country, had the same thing, was feeling perfectly fine, and five minutes later, dropped over dead. You're like, oh, <laughs> I'm in trouble. Start to write some notes. Love you, honey. We all exercise faith right? I mean, someone says, hey, there is a great sale at, and they'll tell you the place to go. So by faith, you go there, and it's not on sale. Or you read it for the Black Friday sale. What you missed was there's only one available in Alaska. <laughs> we all operate on faith. This morning, again, I want to argue Propose, submit that our faith ought to be in God Almighty. That that is where our true faith ought to lie. Not in myself, not in a doctor or some internet search, but in God himself. If you have your Bibles open, Hebrews chapter 11, beginning in verse 1, if you would please. Where the writer says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it... And it is of faith. The elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Let me pause there real quick. I will probably get there this morning. But just think about this for a moment. By faith, the Bible says, we accept that God framed the world, or He created the world. This wasn't just an accident. People who don't have faith in God will claim that what we see all around us and who we are and our bodies and the, the trees and the animals just happened by chance. An accident with enough time. The Bible says by faith. We know that God framed the worlds. I have a cell phone here. I already pictured it once for Google. It's a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. Means nothing. I realize that. Some of you are, are Apple iPhone fanatics, and, and one or two of you still use a flip phone. I saw one of those once at the Smithsonian. <laughs> Brother Lou right there, he said, watch it, watch it. But what you don't know is that uh, I actually built this cell phone this morning. I got bored. So I got some sand, put it in a bag, grabbed a little bit of wire, put it in the bag, and then I dropped in five M80s, and I blew them up. And out popped this phone. If you believe that, I have some beachfront property in Arizona to tell you, miles and miles of sand. 
Yet we're taught to have faith that all this was by accident. We had an explosion caused all of this, and somehow out of all that, and out of a, a vast amount of time, my eyes ended up in my head instead of my kneecaps. Not an accident. That's what the scripture is saying. By faith, we see that the worlds were framed. They were made by, framed by the word of God. So things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Verse 4, by faith, Abel. Abel, the son of Adam and Eve, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found. I talked about this last week that someone once said, perhaps it went like this, or walking and talking that night, God and Enoch, and God said, Enoch, tonight, why don't you spend the night at my house tonight? What I did not mention last week was that little phrase, and he was not found. That meant they were looking for him. They went looking for Enoch, and they couldn't find him. As, as far as I can tell, um, until Hebrews really came around, or most of Hebrews, they didn't really know what happened to him for a while. They didn't know what happened to him. Until God spoke and had it written down. But they were looking to see what happened to Enoch. Most likely the people that looked for him never knew what happened to him, but God knew, and God recorded for us to know. He said he was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony. I mentioned this last week, but I love this phrase, that he pleased God. That he pleased God. And don't miss this next verse. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he, that God is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for this particular passage. And Lord, as we deal with and, and contemplate and look at faith this morning, I pray that our hearts would be stirred. Lord, I can't help but pray for the folks here who have never trusted you as their Savior today, who have not accepted you by faith. Lord, I ask that you would touch their hearts today, that they would put their faith for the, their eternal life in your hands, knowing that him that cometh to you, Lord, you will no wise reject or cast out. And they'll never lose that assurance. But Lord, I also pray for the Christians here this morning who have trusted you as their Savior, but still struggle with walking by faith. Lord, I pray that our faith would be strengthened and challenged this morning. Lord, help me say those things that would be helpful, that would be true to your word. And by your word, would you change us for your glory? In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. Faith. Someone said, faith is to, do, to believe what we do not see, and the reward of faith is to see what we believe. Last week I talked about the evidence of faith. We all believe something. This week I'd love to preach on the effect of faith. You see, we all exercise faith. This morning, But there is a difference between blind faith and the evidence of faith. You know, sometimes if we're not careful, we will act as if our faith in God is a blind faith. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. But is it that we have no evidence for faith? Is it that what we're saying about the Bible and what God says is without any evidence? And here the scripture argues, no, in fact, it's the opposite, that we have evidence for faith, not just a blind faith. We can look around and we can see, we can see a world, the Bible says, that has been framed by the word of God. Even without that, the Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament that's up above the heavens there, right, all around us, show His handiwork. We can see that, that things that are just, uh, have no reason to be the way they are, that, that there is an intelligent designer in this. There is an element of faith we must accept. We have these things called opposable thumbs. What a wonderful thing called an opposable thumb. I can pick up things. This is wonderful. This is marvelous. 
Aren't you glad your knees bend forwards, not backwards? And that they both bend forwards? Wouldn't that be awkward? Have you ever had a brace or problem with your knee? Well, JL, you did a little few weeks ago. Anybody ever had a knee problem in their life? Is it walking? Walking, isn't it difficult? I mean, you, you take for granted, you start to limp and, you know, drag his leg, and, and then everyone stops and asks, what's wrong with you? Well, my knee's just put on backwards. No, they expect everything to be the same. There's some evidence for faith. We're not just, we're not just here to make a wish. You see, you come to a birthday celebration, and birthdays in our house are a real big deal. I love birthdays. I celebrate a birthday month. <laughs> Growing up, I was one of seven kids, and my parents did a great job of making sure our birthdays were special. You got to choose the menu that day, and, and we still do that in my house to this day. And, and we make birthdays a big deal. If you're around me, listen, birthdays are a big deal. We have birthday cakes and candles, right? And, and what do people say before they blow out the candles? Make a, a wish. Let's be honest for a second. Old and young, how many have ever made a wish blowing out birthday candles? Come on, have you ever made a wish? Come on, put them up there. Come on, come on. How many knew that it was not going to happen? Come on, you knew it. You still made a wish. That's blind faith. There is no evidence that making a wish before blowing out birthday candles will cause whatever you wish for to happen, right? There is no evidence for that at all. And likewise, there's no evidence that if the said person then says what they wished for, that that wished for thing will now not happen. Right? Oh, it's not good, good, good. It's not going to come true now. Based on what? Right? Based on experience? No. Based on, no, just based on idea. That is blind faith thinking, all right, believing in some random thing. Our faith in God is not blind faith. There is evidence for faith in God. Now, we don't see everything yet, but there's evidence for faith in God. That's what that verse number one says. There is evidence. It's not just a blind faith. P picture this. Picture that you enter to win a sweepstakes for a brand new iPad. iPad, for some of you folks, is a tablet device from Apple. It's a neat little thing. In fact, I, I preach off one. My notes are on the iPad right here. This is an iPad right here. And let's pretend that I entered a sweepstakes to win one of these things. Now, I don't win anything. There are some people who are just so lucky. Come on now. They, they, there's, there's, a, there's a guy in Florida has won the lottery. I want to say like five. Now, I want to say five times. I can't be right, though. The odds of him doing that are just astronomical right now. And he's, just, he's won it multiple times, though, more than once. All right, it's ridiculous. Me, I remember a few years back, they had that little, little game at Burger King. They had the scratch-off cards, and they were 50-50 chance of winning. There was two spaces, you scratched off one, and you'd won something, like fries or a burger or something. So I had four of them. The odds are I win two. So I said, I'm going to scratch off the left-hand side on every one because that's the odds, and you're going to win two. So the first one, I scratch off left-hand side. You know, sorry, please play again. You know, why do they always say, you know, thank you for playing, please play again? You know, why do they say thank you? Know, whatever. I'm not discouraged. I had three more. I scratched off the second one. You know what it said. You know, thank you for playing, please play again. I'm not worried. I'm winning the last two. I scratched off the third one. And it says, thank you for playing, please play again. So now I'm saying, guess myself, I said, you know what, I'm going to switch to the other side in the last one. <laughs> you know what happened, I did switch, and I lost all four of them. <laughs> so I'm not winning any sweepstakes in my life. Some of you folks, everything, every, everything you do, you're like, oh, I entered it, there was 14 billion people, and I won, I won. <laughs> Get out of my sight. Get out of my face, I don't like you. But let's suppose you entered to win an iPad, and the odds were one in five million people. All right, better than some. And so what you do is you run to Best Buy and you buy a case for the iPad that you know you're going to win. And you buy a charger and you start to buy apps off the App Store because you're going to win this iPad and every day you sit by your front door waiting for the mailman to come because you're going to win. You know what that is? Blind faith. That is blind faith. 
Well, let's look at it this way. What if you buy an iPad off a website, like a Best Buy website, and they give you a tracking number? You think they're sending it to you, do you not? You have, if I can use this word, faith that they're going to send you this iPad. You have faith because you put your faith in something. And now you go out and buy an iPad case because you are convinced that iPad is coming. You have a tracking number. You can track it where, wow, it just left Wisconsin. Now it's in Perry. Uh, I think it's uh, Perrysburg, Ohio. They go to next and they come to, uh, uh, where do they come to? Wyoming, Michigan. You say, Brother Howell, do you know where packages come? Yes, I track them all the time. They come to Wyoming, Michigan, then they come to Saginaw, if I'm not mistaken, and then they get out for... Worst words in the world, out for delivery. What are you drivers doing all day? Do you not know I'm standing by the door waiting for the package to arrive? You have faith that that out for delivery means it's coming to your house. And when it comes, are you surprised? No. I knew it was coming. Faith in God is not blind faith, I hope I win. It is a tracking number faith. If I have faith in God, it will happen. If I trust Him for eternal life, I am going to heaven, even more sure than any FedEx tracking number. God will do what He says He will do. He always has, and the Bible says He cannot fail. You see, my faith has evidence. It's not just a blind faith. All right, there's evidence for this faith. So when I ask us to trust in God, it's not like a make a wish at a birthday candle. It is like, listen, you can bank on it. You can live for it. All right. You can do it because what God says will happen, will happen. That's why we look at here in this passage, the effect of faith. If you look at verse number two, the Bible says this, for by it, that is faith, the elders obtained a good report. I see here, first of all, there's a effects for a life. Here the writer tells us that the elders, they obtained a, a good report. Or can I say it this way? They got a report, card, a report card from the sovereign of the universe, and it had an A-plus on it. Now some of you ain't never seen an A-plus on your report card. Some of you hide the report card before your parents saw it when you were growing up, and, and uh, it still happens to this day that young people try that shenanigans. We had it sometimes at Bridgeport Baptist Academy. Hey, we didn't get a report card. That's funny because we sent one. You know, came in a Bridgeport Baptist Academy envelope. Kids are smart, right? Now we're a little bit past that. Now we use online so parents can just log on, right? Get that report card and you see, well, how am I doing? I remember in college, you're, you're looking at those grades and, and uh, boy, I want some good grades. I, I didn't want to fail anything. I wanted to do well in my, in my college studies. I remember I had a speech teacher once. His name was Eddie Murphy. <laughs> it's not the other Eddie Murphy that apparently you know. He was not in entertainment. He was Eddie Murphy. And, and he gave me a B on a speech. Everybody say, aww. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your compassion for my life. <laughs> All right. Now, my mother teaches speech at Delta College and has for many years. And mother, I don't know if I ever told you this story. He gave me a B&T speech, and I went to him. I said, Mr. Murphy. Yes, J.D. I said, you gave me a B on this speech, and I said, you and I both know that you gave so-and-so an A, and you and I both know that I am better than he is. He said, you're right. You're right. I did give you a B. And you are better, and you did a better job than he did. I said, Mr. Murphy, then, how did you give me a B? He said, J.D., you and I also both know that you can do better than you did. <laughs> Didn't like Mr. Murphy very much. <laughs> the idea to push me onto something greater in life, you know, go outside my comfort zone. I did walk away saying, fine, I'll show him. I'll do really good the next speech. I take out an A the next time. Got that report card. 
Here, the Bible gives us that example, and it says, listen, the elders, the ones that we're going to talk about, there is Cain and Abel, or there's Abel versus Cain. You have Noah and Abraham, and you come down through the passage, and you have Isaac, and you'll have Moses through this. Um, you'll have Samson and David and Samuel and many others, all right? These are the elders the Scripture's talking about, and the Bible says that these elders obtained an A-plus on the report card from God Almighty, not because of the actions that they did. It's not because Noah just built an ark, though that was uh, an outcome, outflow of his faith. It wasn't just because, because Abraham went somewhere, though that was the outcome of his faith. It was because they exercised faith. And they exercised faith in God. That's where we can obtain a good report. It's effects for a life. You see, when you exercise, when you uh, use faith and put your faith in God, the Bible says with that faith, you can please God, and the elders obtained a big, fat A+. Plus. I don't know about you, but I would love for God to look at us, to look at me and say, you know what? That man pleases me. That woman pleases me. Their report, A+, plus because of their faith in me. As I read through this, through this chapter, chapter 11, and do it later on or some other time, you'll notice that all of these men, if you study their lives out, or most of, most of them, made some mistakes. They weren't perfect. The, 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 the criteria for this report card was not perfection, but faith. And I'm so glad that's the case, because I'm not perfect and you're not perfect. And if it was perfection, I ain't ever going to make it. If it's perfection, you aren't going to make it ever. But because it's faith, I can do that. You can do that. In fact, we looked at a few weeks back, little children can do that. Where Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. He goes on to talk about the faith as a child, the effect of faith, its effects for life, its effects for the afterlife. In verse 7, we see specifically that Noah became the heir of righteousness, the end of that verse, which is by faith. You see, faith is not just in the here and now. Faith is forever. Like the old song says, and forever is a long, long time. Maybe you've tried to wrap your mind around forever. It's an impossibility. Just when you think you figure it out, something else blows your mind in that. But God says that because of faith, we can be an heirs of righteousness. It's effects for the afterlife. Because of faith, I'm going to live forever with God, forever and ever and ever. I don't have to spend a day in the devil's hell because of faith. Because of faith, I know that my family can spend forever with me in heaven. Because of faith, I know that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the effects of faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. I love that song, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. It's a good thing this world isn't our home because if this is our home, we'd be a mess. Last night we had a heap of rain. About 11 o'clock last night, we had smoke alarms going off in our household. Are, are the smoke alarms that are linked together? Whoever thought that up, I'd just like to say thank you. <laughs> With a metal chair. <laughs> anyway, uh, these things are going off, and the kids are in bed. They, they jump up. Johnny comes running down. They're scared. I'm walking through the house trying to identify which smoke alarm has a problem. Okay, because they're all green and then usually one will go red at this problem. They're obviously a problem because they're all ringing. So I'm in the basement and, you know, the, the dog is not happy and my wife's not happy. The kids aren't happy. I'm not happy. And, and it was the very last smoke alarm I checked. Why? Because I don't win anything. <laughs> of course it's going to be the last one I checked. It's upstairs. I skipped the first one and finally found the problem. It was the rain caused some water to come into the smoke alarm last night. That's home ownership, isn't it, though? Right? This world is not my home. Because if it is, it ain't a very good home. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. You see the effect of faith, effects for life, effects for the afterlife. Effects for everyone around us. The Bible teaches us that what we are seeing was not made of things which do appear uses that word framed. That's a good word. It's a good construction word. 
What we see was framed by the word of God. It was built. It was, it was locked in. I am not a great construction person. I have become more adequate over the years. My wife thinks I'm handy, so please don't tell her otherwise. Most projects are an excuse to buy another good tool. But when you're doing something, you want to make sure the frame is correct, the foundation, the structure. We had a few years back these steps put into our church. The man who comes to our church actually did them for us, an excellent, an excellent construction guy. And I don't worry, I don't worry about walking up and down these steps because I trust, I trust who, who built these steps. If I had built them, well, dicey. If my kids had built them, use the other doors. <laughs> but the Bible says the effects of faith are for the world. The worlds were framed by the word of God. He says just one reason that you can put your faith in God. See, we have choice to make. I would argue every single day. First choice is to Trust Christ as our Savior. That's a one-time decision. The Bible says you can be born again. I don't have to be born every day. I can be born one time. How do I find out I'm still alive? Well, look, I'm alive. I don't have to show you my birth certificate. But after that, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. For some of us Christians, we want to walk by sight and not by faith. We know what the Bible says, and we'd love to have a good report. But we're not quite checking the boxes to get the good report. Because faith is a criteria for a good report. This morning, I encourage you, if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, if you don't know that you died, that you'd go to heaven, I encourage you today to trust Christ. In just a moment, we're going to pray. And then we'll have a chance for you to have someone open the Bible and show you how you can know for sure. If you've never trusted Christ, I would implore and beg you that today you let us open the Bible and show you how you can know you're on your way to heaven. And fellow Christian, I encourage you to let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Maybe you've trusted Christ a long time ago, but maybe you're not walking by faith. Maybe if the report card was given for you, it wouldn't be like the elders. Let's walk by faith today. Lord, I thank you for loving us. I thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for the evidence we have for our faith in you. It's not just a blind, it's not a blind faith, Lord, but a proven faith. Lord, help us to, to be honest as you search our hearts. Lord, know us.